we talked about real syntax of main. Actually, what main looks like. Uh, and we said main uh, accepts actually three arguments. Um, and the three arguments that it accepts, it, it's all about getting information about the operating system. Now, the operating system, uh, um, the information that you can actually get from operating system would be essentially what command, what arguments you want to pass to the, uh, what arguments you want to pass to the, uh, to the program in a command line. You want to write a function. Uh, you want to write a, a, a what should we call it? Um, um, a, uh, an operating system command, if you want to write a copy command, an ls command, something like that. When you want to do something like that, you want to pass the information to it. And we mentioned uh, main receives the first, the, the first two arguments that it receives. The first one actually tells you how many things are on the command line. So if the main is, like if the program over here is called ABC, so then, or I'm going to call it, uh, I don't know, command. So. So I have one, two, and three. So now on the command line, I have four arguments. One is command, one is one, one is two, one is three. Command itself, that is the name of the executable, will be the very first thing that you're going to have in this array. So this array argv that you have that starts from zero, these are actually an ar a uh, arrays of strings, a two-dimensional array of strings. Uh, arc 0 will hold command, arc 1 will hold 1, arc 2 will hold 2, arc 3 will hold 3, and this will have number 4 in it. We talked about the, uh, the environment uh, variable that we have in main. That gives you all the, vari all the environment variables defined in the operating system. So anything you want to get from the operating system, you already want to see what is the username. You want to know how many CPUs your machine have. You want to see what is the what is the architecture of the CPU. What is the operating system yet? What is the operating system itself? All the values that you want, they are in there. You can always print them out, and you see. And this is the program for it. So, uh, and whatever it returns, it returns back to the OS. And we said that if you want to actually test your program, passing argument to it, you have to set your uh, uh, environment in uh, Visual Studio um, using the project and project properties. Go to the debug section of the properties, jump to the other one, and click on debugging, and then you have the command line argument. So in here, I can put our, um, what do I put? Uh, ABC, uh, hello there. And so in here, Hello there is argument number one and two, and zero will be the name of the executable. And running the, uh, the program is going to have 55,000 things printed, but hey. Um, so we're going to have this printed. There we go. And as you see there, are, and, and I put uh, index beside it, so uh, if you come over here, you'll see have one, two, and three. The first one is the name of the executable. When uh, the IDE is the Visual Studio is calling your program and running it, uh, um, it puts the absolute path. So whatever you put over there, it's just not name of the executable. If you want the next name of the executable, you have to traverse through this thing. There is no short way around it. You cannot say, I just want the, the, the file name. If you want to actually get, the, for example, I want to check and make sure that the name of the executable is not changed. If I want to do something like that, you have to actually first see on what type of operating system you are. So if it's separated in slash or, or backslash, and then you have to keep counting, find the last one, and then come back and everything else becomes the name of the executable. And if you don't have anything, then the, that one is that. The rest are, are obvious. There is no uh, thing around. The environment variables, again, uh, every single one of them is a single string. Anything before the assignment character is the name of the OS uh, uh, environment variable. Anything after the uh, assignment character is actually uh, the value of that. So if you want to know all users profile, I see column backslash program data. The home drive for this 
profile that I'm logged in with is C column backslash. So if you don't mention where you want to uh, save and you want to go to the home drive, that's C. Uh, what is the home path? Like if you want to, if the, if the user wants to save certain type of data and you want to have that data kept for next thing and you want to make sure it's not going to get conf uh, mixed up with another user running, then you can find out what is the home path and put it on that one. Every single thing that you, <clears throat> that you have uh, in this setting is set, uh, is every, every single variable that you have in the, in the OS is there. And at the end, one thing that I did not mention is it comes down. What does it say over here? Now, it wasn't like this in previous versions of uh, Visual Studio, but now it does. It says yada, 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 execute process this, exit it with code, one, two, three. Where does that, where does that one, two, three come, where is that one, two, three coming from? That's the return statement. Okay, now in Windows, if you want to get that in shell script is percent sign error level percent sign. So if you say echo error level, that number is going to jump up. Uh, Linux gurus, what is that? The return value, it's kept in an environment variable. Anyone knows? No one? Seriously? No one. Huh? I know. <laughs> Long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. I know. All right. Good. That's that. So, zero, 01, real syntax of me. I think almost every single workshop that you have in OOP345 accepts uh, default value, uh, arguments through the command line. Last time I thought, it was like a year ago. Everyone, so, so if that's the case, they're going to tell you set your IDE. Remember, you have to go to, again, you have to go to project, then you have to go to project properties, and if they ask you to put something in a command line, this is where it goes, okay? And if you have to run that, run the workshop on Linux, then you write the name of the file and write the command line that you're putting. All right. So what is this? Let's remove this, stop this one. All right. So I just want to make sure that I am covering everything. So uh, essentially, um, yeah. So um, I'm just looking at the first three weeks to see if there is anything that I missed. We talked about inheritance, modularity, building blocks, everything go through. Anybody actually, anybody actually went through it, came with questions? Remember I told you read it and come with questions? Anyone? No? Okay. Would be a nice thing if you did that, like just for a change. Seriously, uh, after you're done with this, I'm not asking you to like go read the whole book. You know, each one of these is like, what, five, 10 paragraphs? Just go read it and see if you don't understand the piece. Come and tell me so I can explain it to you later. It's impossible for me to be able to go through it. Uh, well, I'm talking about these, okay? Like, for example, external language and stuff, I didn't talk about much, so I'm going to talk about it now. So uh, when we are dealing with uh, linkage, I actually, I'm going to, I want to actually, write a piece of code for it, but it's easier to actually bring something that I've done for OOP244 today. Uh, just to show you what it is, because the files are ready over there. I just want to bring it in. It's just the student thing that I created. Probably you remember it when you were in OOP244. Yeah. So,
So add let's say I want to create a global variable for the student. What can a student have to be a global variable? Uh, let's say a student, sorry, it doesn't even have a constructor. It was the first day. They're just learning what a constructor, <laughs> destructor and stuff is. <laughs> Brings up memories, eh? Um, if I want to do, if I want to actually create, let's say, um, what is a universal thing? Mm. Let's say we want to deal with taxes, since one of us, I want to have a global variable to, to hold the taxes, and it may change every now and then. I don't know. My brain doesn't work, so I'm kind of trying to come up with something. If you want to have a global variable, real global, global variable, I, I have to create it up here. So I have to have something like a double tax up here, right? And I'm going to set it to 0 0.13, OK? If I want to do something like this, how can I make this global everywhere? If this header file gets included every single place, and so if I have it one in prg.cpp and five includes everywhere, any place that that header file is not included, that place will have a double tax 0 0.13. But if any of those cha change that value to 0 0.15, then the rest remains 1.3, right? So this is not a global variable. It's just series of copies at every place that it's adding, it's, it's being added to that one. I don't want this. I want this to be actually be one thing. So what do I do? I'm going to come over here. I'm going to say, OK, forget about that. I'm going to say double extern double tax, OK? And then I'm going to come to the student CPP in here. And in here, I'm going to say double tax is 0, 013. That's external linkage. Now think about it and see what happens. Your student.cpp will get compiled in one of the modules. Let's say you have 10 modules. Student.cpp is one, and the rest are including the header file for the, uh, for the student. Do I have your attention? When the module for student.cpp is being compiled, that extern, forget about it, it's going to have a file scope global variable called tax that is set to 0, 1, 3, correct? Any other, any other. module that is including student.h student will have a statement up there that says extern double tax. It means there is a double called tax that is defined externally. External links are not handled with the compiler. External links are kind of like prototypes of functions. When you write extern double tax, you are telling the compiler, hold on, there is a double tax coming. Just compile the code, the linker is going to take care of it. So it's going to actually add that flag or setting for a double tax to come, and it's going to do the process on it. But when everything gets linked, all those extern taxes will point to student.cpp tax. But if I go in, an edit, in another module and create another double tax, not an external, global in a file, then the linker is going to give you an error. Linker is going to tell you, hey, you are telling everyone that there is a single tax and is defined externally, but I'm seeing there are two of them. Which one you're dealing with? So whenever any variable, class, object. It doesn't have to be a variable. By the way, you are just looking at C out. 
C out is defined like that in IO stream. When you include IO stream, you have extern yada yada C out. And it's only defined, the object is instantiated in the library inside the code. So when you are actually externally saying this is available, it understands what C out is and just trusts you. But when everything gets linked, then it becomes that unique global object C out that you are using. And it's the exact same thing over here. So you have to be careful about this. This is external linkage. Now, external variables can be accessed by where using, uh, uh, let me just go to here. Mm. So if I include, student.h, now you can have over here see out tax. Okay? Are we okay? Yes. So we have file. Yes, you have to include the header file to gain access to the external variable. And that actually makes sense because if tax is only used by a student class, why do you need it if you're not including it? You know, that global variable only, only applies to all of those modules who are using the student. Yes, sir? It changes in the other one. It is, it is literally an ex a, a, a global variable. So here. Yeah, if. I, yeah, if I, one more time? Because they're all one, it doesn't matter. They're all correct one. Okay. There are, when, you are dealing, when you are dealing with externals, you have 5,000 external extern, extern statements and only one uh, instantiation. Therefore, they all point to the one. It doesn't matter which one is right because they all point to the one. And that's one of the dilemmas and bad things about global variables, right? Because you're saying, th that's why we always say global variables are not good because you don't know who's changing it. But sometimes they come handy when the object is really a global object, like C in and C out. You want your C in to take effect when the cursor is moving in the next one that is using C in. You don't want one to print over here and the cursor moves, but when it goes over there, it doesn't know that the cursor has moved over there. <laughs> you, you follow what I'm saying? Okay, so, so if, glo if something that is global is really needed, then that's what you do. All right. Compilers, linkage. We talked about statically and dynamically allocated. We know what they are. Okay, one thing that we need to, to understand, what is, um, I gave you an example of statics, right? I think I did. Of course, why not? No, no. To the, it has to be the exact same thing as the other one. So if your tax is a const and you want to have a global const variable everywhere, then, you, then in student.cpp you say const double tax yada yada, and everywhere else you say extern const double yada yada, instead of extern const. No. Then if you want to have a global constant definition for something, you want to define pi. Okay, it's three one four. Okay. If you want to actually do that, then it, so essentially, if I wanted to have pi set, for some reason for CSN or why they want a pi, but but if I wanted to do that, then it, I I would say over here constant, double, pi, is set to. All right, so that's pi. And then everywhere else, if I wanted to access that, then it's going to be extern const double pi. And now pi is constant, you can't change it. But it remains the same everywhere. Are we okay with this? Okay, are we okay? All right. All right, so. Mm. 
Um, I'm going to take these out. I'm going to take these out. So tax. is set to 0 point whatever so we can we can do that but if you say pi is set to then it won't let you use it okay and this is error All right. Zero two. So we are essentially, seriously, so we are essentially in week one now. Okay, so. And the workshop that is coming up is for week one. So we are going, that's why we are going through all these things. And uh, I talked about statics, and I said statics are actually global variable, global variables, but you have to realize that they are global in lifetime only. Okay? They are global in lifetime only. So if I have static int i, zero we are doing c plus plus 17 so we might as well use it okay so if we are using it static int i zero and i is zero that's another way of initialization that we're going to learn soon okay so it's actually initializing i to zero now um, uh, because i is static over there it's going to get created only once and it gets initialized to the value that it has and then after it is done, and it's going to, after it's set and done, uh, every single time you are calling foo function, it's going to use the good old static that it has. And then uh, uh, the, the value actually uh, remains the same. So it keeps its old value. If it wasn't static, so essentially if I run this program, as you see, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You remove the static, and you're going to have 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. Are we okay? So those are the statics. But statics for uh, classes, how do, how do they work? Oh, I shouldn't have taken that uh, student thingy out. <laughs> Let me bring it back. So that's static. Uh, static, this, this static that you see is nothing to do with C++. This is good old C, OK? There is no C++ in this code. It is pure C. It runs in any C pro. Of course, if you have to change the C out to printf, but it works. The static is the same. Back to that student thingy that we had. Let's say I want to see how many instances of student is getting created. OK? So that set thingy that I have, I'm going to create this quick constructor for the, for the student and the instructor. So uh, we're going to have a constructor over here, student, um, uh, constant name, character, name and we're going to have integer age okay um, and we're going to call uh, oh, and let's create a destructor too
So let's have it over here. And right set, name and age. And let's put it in a safe empty state. I'll put it at the other side and the student, I'm not going to do anything in it. It's just, and when I created the structure, what do I write here? Anybody remembers? No, yes, but not that. Is this a correct syntax for a destructor? OP244. I told you from today to the day you die, virtual, thank you. Destructors are always virtual, remember that. Why is that? Can anybody remember? No, yes. If, one more time. Yes, if, deri if there are derived classes out of this, and, and dynamic memory allocation happens, and you have virtuality happening over here, if the children of students are allocated into the student pointer and you delete a student, only the student part's going to get deleted. So it's always safe to make a destructor virtual just in case. That's one of the major, uh, I shouldn't put it over here actually, I should put it in the definition, I don't know why I put it over here, but you know, it's one of the major reasons for bug, because they, they create a, a class and then they want to improve the class using inheritance and um, without knowing because the the structure of the parent class is not virtual, they're going to have memory leak unintentionally. Okay? So always have it. But that wasn't the point I wanted to make. Let's say I want to see how many instances of the object student is getting created. If I want to do that, how do we deal with this? So in here I'm saying static number of objects. Okay? And it's an integer. OK? You OK with this? The problem is that when you are creating static, member variables not in the function. If you are creating in a function, you're good to go. If you create it in a member function, it's just the regular static thingy. and. Whatever it is, it's, it belongs to that, to that one, and it's fine. But when you are creating it as a member variable, this is what happens. So statics are unique things that they created that they never die, right? So if this thing gets created, and I have different objects of student created, S1, S2, S3, and so on so forth, OK, they all have names. And age, right? Correct? But that static int number of objects can get created only once. You cannot have two of them. Therefore, if you, I think it's in C sharp. Oh my god, I forgot C sharp. I have to go teach it again to remember. I think they're called shared. They call it, or in Visual Basic or something, they call these shared variables between classes. Why? Because as soon as you create that one, it's going to be one shared thing called number of objects, and it's going to be shared by all instances of the class. There's not going to be two of them. So if object number one it sets it to one, object number two prints it, one is going to get printed. Problem is that. And which constructor is going to set that one to anything? Because you don't know which construct, like a constructor of which object. How, do, how does a compiler know this is the first one? Let me initialize it. It can't, right? Because of that fact, you have to initialize this as a separate member variable of its own. 
which means you have to actually say int student set to 0. Now it is instantiated. You have to separately instantiate it by yourself manually and set it to the value that you want. Now what I can do, I can actually go to the constructor and in every single constructor I can say number of objects, plus plus, and any destructor I can say number of objects, minus minus. So now it can keep, keep track of how many objects of this instance of this class is getting created. And you can look at it like you can create a method over there and say uh, number of instances. And that method will, will access it. Now, that method by itself, that method, so if I want to actually get the number of instances, so I want to have a function over here. Number of instances. Return number of objects. So I could have something like this. I didn't write it outside, just wanted to show it. it's in line, but I'm going to take it out, OK? Now I can write it like this. It's very fine. I have a question. If you are in S2, can you look to see what is the number of objects? Yes, you can. If you're in S1, can you go and check and see what number of objects? Yes, you can. And you can keep doing that, right? Uh, this number of instances is a regular function, but you can actually make that function to be static too. Why create so many versions of, this, of the different of, of the function when it's, when it's accessing the static value? Because this is only one. I don't need to have copies of this thing. So you can actually make that static too. There is one problem in here that you need to know. If this is static, it means this function is considered to be an outsider too. So that's your function out there. OK? This function, in this function, you cannot say set name, show name. Because this function is static, there is only one instance of this function. It is impossible for that function to access. Because if you say, I want to see what is the age, it's going to say, which one? I am a static member of the whole species. I don't know which one you're talking about. So static functions can only access static member, value, member variables. OK? Can only, uh, can, can, yes. But normal, regular functions can access anything. All right? So in here, if I say, um, C out M H. That's wrong. You can't do that. You cannot access that. H is not accessible. M H is not static. Are we okay with this? When you instantiate the student, okay. You're, you're setting the, the the static number of objects to zero, and then. No, you're not. Actually, that static variable gets created completely separately on its own, even if there are no classes. So, first one. No, it gets created. That's the funny thing. Not funny thing. It's an interesting thing. So. I just wanted to tell you this, but you kind of skipped a little forward. These are called, they, are, they, call, the, they call these static thing, static variables, shared variables, and also class variables. What does it mean? 
if you are calling set, if you are calling, do I have a student over here? No. So let me include the student. Uh, do, am I in a namespace in here? Yes. So if you have a student, and now that I'm doing this, let me just take that out if you don't mind. Give me two seconds. Let's see. All right, now let's get rid of this. All right, so if I'm here, if I create a student, actually, let's not create a student. I can simply say C out student number of instances. That function is not a member of any particular student. It's member of all of them. So you not only can call it by an object's reference, but also by the class's reference, because class is the owner of that. The whole objects of student have access to that static thing. OK? So uh, you, and you have used this a lot. Whenever you say iOS scope resolution left, iOS, all those scope resolutions that you're using to, to have uh, constant values for IO stream and things like that, you do that, right? When you use those, you're actually using these static stuff, static values that are shared between all of them. Okay, they are class variables, literally. Okay, so this is the thing. So in here I can, so if I do it like this, it's gonna actually show me zero because it is zero, right? But then if I do this, if I go see out, OK, so now if I actually do something like this, I can go see out s dot number of instances or see out student number of instances. They are identical because there is only one instance of that function. Are you OK? For this speed, I think we're going to go up to week three by the end of the semester. OK. All right. Let me just let me just go to the next topic. All right, are we okay down to here? I don't mind. I don't mind. I, if, if we learn, that's what we learn. Uh, okay, so that's that. Uh, so zero four uh, static class members. All right. Are we good? Lots of people are going out. Do we need a break? Break? Break. All right. <sighs> 